Now then, welcome back to another episode in the Hexit mod pack. However, this is a vanilla mob uh, mob farm tutorial. This is a lava blade trap. A lava blade trap with a bit of a difference, I guess, because uh, if I show you here, a normal lava blade trap that I saw everywhere when I was designing this gives us let's put it there gives us a one lava blade that can kill things so in vanilla you can get them in a one by one area and kill the mobs with a lava blade how you get them there is irrelevant really how you kill them when they get there is something you've got to decide and I could have used piston pushers and things like that but I wanted to use uh, lava and lava blades just because that was how I was feeling at the time. So that is a standard lava blade design. Then when I put four together to make it a two by two lava blade, um, something horrible happened. The lava all joined together and made a big congealed mess because as soon as two touched, they became a larger lava block. And two lava blades together always mess up and uh, cause problems. So I had to find the solution. And here in my test world, this is how it looks. So the 2x2 two two hole, where the mobs will end up being here. From whatever means I got them here, whatever means you get them here, they're standing on top of four hoppers. And the hoppers are aimed at a chest somehow. Uh, we've got signposts just above the hoppers to stop the lava from going ever down onto the hopper itself. But the mobs standing here will get caught by all the lava, burn up and die and their drops will go into the hoppers. That's the overall objective. And then we've got the individual lava blades all set up round like this so that uh, we can trigger them all. Each one's got a redstone torch underneath the trigger point. This is the trigger point here. It is the trigger point because the first signal sends a signal into the dispenser and into the repeater around the chain of repeaters to pick the lava back up again. So the first signal empties the lava out. The second signal comes round after an 8, uh, 12, 16 tick delay, four repeaters on full, 16 tick delay to grab the lava back, leaving only the lava blade, like so. You hear the two clicks? And that becomes a lava blade. And it takes three blocks down in order to turn it into the lava blade. So at that point there, when it's a big fat lava pool, if another one joins it, it becomes a great big persistent mess of lava in this 2x2 two two area. And even in this test world, I had to clean that out several times before. Well guys, I came up with a solution. And I haven't seen it on YouTube, so I thought I'd put this tutorial out there. I've seen plenty of these lava blade designs as tutorials on the, the YouTubes, but never a quad lava blade design. So here it is. The torches that trigger the lava blade itself are here being turned off by the torch directly below them. As soon as that torch goes out, that torch gives a quick pulse trigger and fires the lava blade on all four of them. Because when two lava blades touch, they start forming this um, big mess of lava, uh, I chose to do two corners together. So those two corners, because they don't actually meet in the middle. So I'm firing that dispenser to make that lava block and that dispenser to make that lava block simultaneously. And then the two other ones. So we've got two yellow for the yellow circuits that control those two and two red that control the red circuits for those two. And the yellow fires, then the red fires. The yellow fires and the red fires with a slight delay so that the lava never meets. And here we have the uh, little chain of redstone and one repeater going to that one on one tick and redstone and one repeater on one tick going that way for the yellow and the yellow comes down here. And the red, same again, redstone and one repeater on one tick, redstone on one repeater on one tick, coming down here. Uh, however you make this happen, you've got to make sure that the redstone signal travels the same distance. So in this case, one repeater 
before it hits the torch. One repeater before it hits the torch. And down. So this is where the timing happens. And it is just a bunch of repeaters, really. A bunch of repeaters. So we go in from this signal here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it goes up. Sets red off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Goes up there to set the yellow one off. So each signal is separated by 40 ticks. 10, uh, 4 tick. Uh, yeah, 4 tick. 1, 2, 3, 4 tick delays. So 40 ticks and then the red goes off. Another 40 ticks and the yellows go off. Another 40 ticks and the reds go off. You'll see here though that there's a, a one sand block. This is a block that this repeater will push the signal through and this repeater will pull the signal out to carry on the clock. So while this block is raised, a simple piston here, while this block is raised, the clock will continue ticking. As soon as this block is lowered, the signal can't pass through and the signal will die off on its way round. Once that's up, it's in the on position. And all that is, is a piston down there leading to a lever. You can rig that up any way you want to make that piston hold that block of sand up. And you don't even need a sticky piston, but a sticky piston will do it just the same. That way a sand block falls. Simple. Then once you've got that in place, you know the system is armed and ready to fire off and carry on. It will carry on looping and looping and looping while you're AFKing at the farm or doing something else at the farm. It will make sure that your lava blades are constantly active, killing all the mobs so that you don't get any server lag or any uh, frame rate lag when you get to them because of too many entities being over there at the spawners. Uh, and this is the starting mechanism. It's a simple pulse shortener. The pulse shortener, basically this torch here, fires off to make this redstone go into this block. Because this repeater is pointing into this block, it can't take it out of the block. But this repeater is pointing out of the block, so it extracts the signal from there, out and starts the timer. Carries on and carries on and carries on. A redstone signal isn't powerful enough to come out of the block, so this won't go anywhere, and this won't even light up once it's signalled, once it's going, to confuse the situation. So this pulse shortener is another well-documented redstone pulse shortener. Uh, a single button here which can be a redstone uh, signal going up like this. Redstone signal going into the block. Could be that. That will work just the same. We'll set the whole thing off with a little pulse shortener. Go all the way around. Start triggering all of the lava blades. Come back down. We can shut it off like that. No problemo. This little bit here is uh, the technical bit. As the button is pressed, it sends a redstone signal for a few seconds into this block here. Into this block here. And this little block here then powers up, which turns this torch off. The one, second, uh, the one tick that this is off is also the first tick the repeater is receiving a signal then this is instantaneously turned off, which turns this torch on in the second tick, while this is still going through its second tick. And you'll see that this is set on three. One, two, three. So the first two ticks, first tick, that torch changes, second tick, that torch changes, and the third tick, this fires into the block once again changing this torch. So this torch ends up going from on and a very split second tick later, one, I think it's one twentieth of a second later, another tick powers this block again turning it off again. So it goes on for a single tick making a pulse. And that pulse we can see here just for a second fires the pulse. Let's put the button on this side so we can see better. Just for a second, there's a pulse. A very, very short short pulse. In comparison to the uh, 
button that gives us quite a long long pulse you see a very very short pulse let's put the button back there and there's the pulse put the block up and hit the button so we've got two controls a, a button that controls this block and a lever that controls that piston and they can be brought out over here to a wall somewhere around here we could have the the wall in your base can just have a, a button and a lever that can control those two and that will set off the ring chain reaction to constantly constantly be firing these off and because they're going corner to corner instead of side by side they never meet so they never meld at that point so they never become a great big messy mess now if I wanted a great big messy mess I'll show you I could fire this at the same time as that you see and it becomes a messy mess of lava and the whole design is to avoid having that happen that messy lava which then will just kill all the mobs and probably kill you as you go in to try and uh, salvage something they definitely kill all the mobs but they will all burn and so will their their drops uh, I hope this uh, quad lava trap tutorial uh, quad lava blade tutorial has made some difference to your life uh, I know that some of my hexit viewers will probably be interested in being able to do it because I'm doing it in the episode uh, that I'm planning next episode 13 so if you haven't already liked and subscribed please do I hope you enjoy this tutorial and hopefully if I get a few likes on this one I'll probably uh, do it again sometime when I come up with something else that's a bit new that I can't find anywhere on YouTube. The Quad Lava Blade by Nemson. Thank you very much and goodbye.